What this economy needs is a continued uh, uh, resurgence of entrepreneurship uh, year in and year out. Uh, and in particular, high growth companies emerging out of the uh, constant ebb and flow of new firm formation. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, new businesses, a boom for the economy. From research to technology to manufacturing, most U.S. jobs produced in the last 30 years have come not from established small businesses, but from young, newly created enterprises. Such businesses can be strong economic drivers and are critical for the nation's bottom line. But the number of business startups is down, and that finding is troubling, notes senior fellow Robert Lighton as he takes a closer look. If we look back over the last 30 years before the recession, we find when we cut the data that virtually all net new jobs were created by firms less than five years old. And it's important to distinguish new firms from small business because the common perception is that it's small business that creates something like half the jobs. And small business is typically defined as firms under 500 employees. But actually, it's better to cut the data by whether a firm is new or old. And firm size actually makes, excuse me, firm age makes a lot more difference than firm size. And uh, when you do that, you find that really the dynamism in the economy is not so much from small business, it's from new business. And so the challenge for government policy is to find ways to keep that flow of new business going. Because in fact, if you look over the last five years, the numbers of new businesses have been dropping. Uh, and also the jobs they've been creating have also been dropping. And that's one of the reasons we find ourselves in the mess that we're in. But you say not to despair because in this country's history, some of the greatest innovations were during the hardest economic times. A lot of people, when they're confronted with the fact that new firms drive uh, job creation, uh, they get very worried because of the deep pessimism now that seems to prevail in the country. And there's a feeling, well, how are we going to create the new Googles and Microsofts if, things, if people are so anxious and so fearful? Well, one factoid that may give people hope is this. If you go back and look at the founding of our current Fortune 500 and ask when they were founded, it turns out that 50% of our largest companies today uh, were founded in either a bear market or recession. Uh, a second thing to keep in mind is that during the Depression, we had perhaps one of the fastest decades of productivity growth um, that we've had, I think, in the last 100, 150 years. And that productivity growth was due to a lot of inventions. Uh, that came forward in the Depression and then were commercialized after World War II. So we can do this even in bad times. So what should we be doing going forward to make it easier to start a new business and grow a new business? Number one and most important without spending any money, and that's to change our immigration laws. We need to uh, attract and retain high-skilled uh, immigrants who come here to study. A lot of people have talked about giving them green cards as soon as they graduate. Um, Second, we need, a start, we need a startup visa. People come here, start a business, hire an American. They ought to be allowed to stay here. The second category of, uh, of changes uh, would relate to capital formation. And I think here tax policy is probably most important. Allowing a capital gains tax exemption for, let's say, investments that are held for at least five years, something the Obama administration has talked about, that's a very good idea. Well, what about universities? Do you see them in their rich research institutions as part of the solution for this problem? We need to accelerate the commercialization of our technologies, especially those that are developed in universities. The way in which the government, which funds a lot of university research, can actually help facilitate the commercialization, primarily by encouraging universities not to hold on so tightly to their intellectual property, by allowing their faculty members more freedom to license their technologies. And there's also talk about regulatory reform. And you call our regulatory rules archaic. How do they hamper new growth? We need to basically bring our regulatory apparatus up to the 21st century, get rid of a lot of the old rules, start over again, and make sure that the new rules that we have in place have benefits that exceed their costs. And finally, in the area of regulatory reform, a lot of people forget the state and local governments because a lot of businesses will tell you that their main barriers are state and local, not federal. And the World Bank now publishes a doing business report which ranks the regulatory reform efforts of countries. Why can't we have a similar kind of report done here for states in the United States? And I think for a relatively small amount of money, the Commerce Department could provide seed funding, assuming that it had the money from Congress, 
and allow people to generate these rankings so that we'd have a race to the top among states to help uh, create uh, or help foster the creation of new firms. And the nation's debt and deficit situation also hurt new businesses. It's very important for us to, fisc to fix our fiscal imbalance. And many people at Brookings have been talking about that for years. And that's an important precondition for the success of any type of business, whether it's new or small, or young or old. But beyond that, uh, government's going to have to do a better job of fostering the creation of new businesses uh, because we've seen a decline in new business formation. And uh, through a series of steps, uh, I think it's possible uh, for us to get our mojo back and to have it sustained. And so many of the nation's hurdles have been impacted by the polarized political climate in the country today. And that is true for this situation as well. Now, it's true that we have a very polarized environment in Congress, but I think you're going to see, I think, over the next couple of months, increasing support on variations of a, quote, startup bill. Now, it may not pass this year because it's an election year, but the longer we stayed stalled in the 8 to 9 percent unemployment range, I think the more people will be willing to uh, come together to try to move the economy forward. And I think there's growing recognition that this economy's dynamism lies in new firms. And that's probably one of the things that Democrats and Republicans agree on. They may not agree on all the specific steps that you need to take, but I think there's growing consensus that uh, this is where the jobs are going to come from. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu slash mobile.